Yowza. Talk about a summer sell-off. The Dow suffering its biggest point drop on Friday in four years. The Dow now down 10% since May, officially in correction territory. And someone here is saying it could drop us right back into a recession. Are they right? Hi, everybody. I'm Dagan McDowell in for Brenda Butner. This is Bulls and Bears. The Bulls and Bears this week, Gary B. Smith. John Layfield, Lisa Booth, and Chuck Rocha. Welcome, everybody. Gary B., this sell-off has you worried about the economy. What is it saying? It does, uh, Dagan. And you remember even uh, a week ago, you and I were sitting in New York talking about the economy, and I was worried about it. Look, there's a couple things going on. One, I think the market always tells a story, and it tells a story about what may happen in the future. We saw the worst weekly decline, Dagan, since October 2008. We all remember 2008. It was horrible. I think we have the underpinnings of something that could be worse. You know, we, we have seen wages stagnant for like 30 years now. We've seen housing still not back to its old level. Demand for oil has dried up because economies across the globe are not growing and labor participation rate is at an all time low. Add those things up. And I think you have some serious storm clouds ahead. And, John, you have a government that does nothing but get in the way of people doing business. Yeah, and the government has done absolutely nothing to help this economy. There's so much gridlock in Washington, D.C. on both sides that you don't have an immigration plan, you don't have a tax plan, you don't have any type of national energy plan. So there's nothing that opens up jobs in America. I, I disagree somewhat with my friend Gary. I think what's happening right now is the second largest economy in the world, China, is slowing down. And so you're seeing a repricing of stock markets around the world and you look at China it goes from 7% to 5% you say well that's not much it's still growing at 5% that's incredible but that is a 30% decline and if you look at this in a historical context you look at the S&P was 500 uh, in the year 1995 just uh, 20 years ago that's a four time increase right now to 2000 and that increase includes two big big dips of 1500 to 1000 twice during the housing crisis and also during the financial crisis Ronald Reagan oversimplified it said markets go up and markets go down but that really is what's happening here this is a correction that is long overdue but Lisa you had an economy in this country that actually contracted in the first quarter before bouncing back in the second we are weak regardless of how you want to look at it we are Gary's talking about wages have not been growing for years you have a very low labor participation rate you have one indication of unemployment that is in double digits people who want to work more but can't is this a recession ahead well, potentially. And look, we've also had uh, incredibly uneven economic growth as well. And I think what's been happening here is the Federal Reserve has been propping up the stock market and there's no historical evidence to support that we can perpetually do this. And I think if you couple that really with um, you know these regulations that we've seen under President Obama in this regulatory state, you know, I, I think that we could be potentially heading for a breakdown. You're talk she's talking about regulations, Chuck, but you, you have the new overtime rules. You have a health care system that is, has been completely torn apart, that was a, is and continues to be a burden on businesses. How can we not see economic weakness ahead? You know, it's weeks like this that remind me that my papa was a pretty wise man by keeping his money in the closet in a cigar box. <laughs> but as you think about us moving forward, we're creating about 200,000 jobs a month. Unemployment is down from 10% to 5%, and foreclosures are at a 10-year low. I tried to look back at this because obviously I'm a political consultant, and this is not my forte. But looking at where the 401 investment is for common everyday Americans, whether you're a small businessman like me, or mom and pop who have been in a 401k where well, you have most of all of your wealth outside of your home tied up in the stock market. It even brings real concern to me. I think that it is a somewhat of a correction, but I think that there has to be a big change or we're going to constantly see the ebb and flow the wrong way, in my opinion. And Gary, Lisa brought up the Federal Reserve. That, would, that literally is the only thing that has been propping up the market, right? The free and easy money that has been pumped into our system while you've got jack all coming from the federal government. Yeah, exactly, Dave. And I, I guess there's two sides of that coin. One is, if the Fed raises rates, what is it going to do to the uh, stock market? And generally, everyone agrees, probably not good. On the other hand, when we see things like 
what happened today, or, or Friday rather, and what happened this past week. Look, the Fed is supposed to just look at economic numbers and things like that. Let's be serious. They look at what's happening with the stock market. So when we see, you know, a really bad, horrible week, uh, that might give them pause to not raise in September. Overall, though, they're going to have to pull back the punch bowl at some point. Yeah. That's another thing, along with those other stats I, I, I mentioned, that's going to hurt the market. If we think, John, if we think this is a hangover, when they start really pulling away the juice, man, there is not a painkiller on planet Earth can they can get rid of that kind of hangover. Yeah, and how in the world, like Gary B says, how in the world can they possibly raise rates in September? Look, they missed the boat. They should have raised them 9 to 12 months ago. They absolutely missed their window and now the reason you raise rates is because you're trying to stop an overheating economy that is not what's going on right now and you look at a disconnect between the stock market and the economy the the stock market is absolutely on fire right now it, the s p was 800 in january of 2009 it is now at 2000 a two and a half time increase there's no way that you can say that the economy is on fire like that. What my friend Chuck Rocha says is right. You are seeing a lot of green shoots, but you're not seeing really great things going on with this economy because you're seeing the labor force participation rate still at a, a multi-decade high. And so you're seeing a disconnect in the stock market. I don't think the Fed raises rates in September. I'd be hard pressed to say they might even not raise them in December. Lisa, I'll offer some good news though. Because of the plunge you've seen in oil prices and gasoline prices, that will put certainly put a lot Lot more money in people's pockets. In addition, you've got the drop in longer term interest rates. Mortgages are going to get a whole lot cheaper. So that hopefully will give our economy a little bit of get up and go. Well, absolutely. Look, I think this oil boom that we've seen, you know, it has nothing to do with President Obama in the sense that he's roped off more federal lands than a, a lot of previous presidents have. A lot of that's happening because of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling that's happening on state and private lands. And so, look, I think we've talked about this economic uncertainty that Americans are feeling. And I really think this is going to be an influential factor heading into the 2016 election, because if you continue, continue to look at the polls, the number one issues that Americans continue to express their concerns with with is jobs in the economy. So I think this kind of volatility in the, the stock market is going to play into that and it could potentially affect uh, voters' decisions heading into 2016. Chuck, usually when someone's running for re-election, a president, they will try and juice the economy, stimulus, make it look good before the election year. That's not the case this year. So is the president just going to sit back and just say, hey, Hillary, try and run on my record now? I think you'll see him concentrate on the positive things that I started with, with the unemployment rate, how many jobs they've created. But this, this week I was down in the Keys. We were doing some fishing with a lieutenant colonel friend of mine, and he is doing a lot of trading of stocks. I'm never going to act like I'm the expert. But he came to me and said, Chuck, you've worked hard. You've got a little bit of liquid assets. Here's the time to invest, which was the first time I'd ever thought about, why would I want to invest now? He's like, this is a time for you to get back in. The market will readjust, and working people like you should get in at this rate. And it made me step back and go, oh, my God, I can talk to Gary B. and John about reinvesting <laughs> in the stock market. He talked about one thing's on the down low, and then he talked about a bull market, and I was like, oh, my God, I do my best financial plan on a fishing boat. That's the, that's the story. I like the, the money in the um, cigar box in the closet because that's the, basically the same thing as buying gold because you're just putting money in a non-performing asset. Gary B., but what do, you, what do you tell somebody who says, hey, should, I've already gotten the questions. Um, you know, just in the, in the last, I got it this morning, several hours. What do you do with new money? Should, should I go to all cash? Cash. Should I put money to work in the stock market? What do you say? Well, two things. One, I say if you're fishing down in Key West, you don't even need to worry about the market. You're already doing great, okay? Keep doing what you're doing. B, I always advise most people to take a very passive approach. Balance it with uh, something like the Dow Diamonds or the SBY, gold and maybe TLT, all the ETFs, the TLT follows the bond market. Every month, every six months, rebalance. Take some uh, that, that's going great guns and put it in the stuff that's not. You'll have very average returns, but you'll have safe returns that can weather just about any economic environment. Okay, that was boring. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I, 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 look, I, I would rather be down fishing in Key West. I, I know. We, we all need to You're take welcome a, anytime. We need to take a page out of Chuck's uh, playbook there. He seems to be having a lot more fun than we are. <laughs> yeah. Politics exactly. is a fun sport. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. And Cavoot on Business is about 20 minutes from now. Charles Payne is in for Neil. Hey, Charles, what have you got?
Hey, Dagan, Donald Trump revealing more of his tax plan. We'll reveal it to you. Plus, a new Planned Parenthood battle is erupting. Hundreds of protests breaking out across the country today, all calling to defund it. Now the group is targeting key GOP senators trying to do it. We're all over it at the bottom of the hour. Thanks, Charles. We can't wait, but up here first, the Donald out with a plan to save tax dollars and stop illegals from crossing our border. Put an end to birthright citizenship, but would it work?